You're listening to the best of ITW, brought to you by Pop Guide and WikiLeaf. The new and deadly menace lurking behind closed doors. Marijuana, the burning weed with its roots in hell. On this episode, ITW welcomes entrepreneur and agent of PMA, Mama Troy Noel of Sublime. Next up, um, we have somebody who's, I got to thank you, who's become a really good friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, Troy Noel, Mama Troy from Sublime, the Sublime family, you can say. She's awesome. Great yeah. human being. Uh, she was married to Bradley Noel, who's yeah. not a, you know, who got, you know, rest in peace. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but she was just, uh, what did we call her in the description? We were writing her, we were, you and I were... An agent of PMA. Yeah, she is yeah, an agent an a- of PMA, dude. Yeah. It's it's yeah. It's amazing, dude. She goes around kind of just spreading joy to everyone. She's always active in the art community. She's always supporting art yeah. from huge artists to local artists. Yeah. She's always helping to I mean she's a part of the fabric of the California scene, man. And she uh Saw so constantly posting, oh, I'm DJing at this art show. Mm-hmm. I'm hanging here. Hey, everybody go and check out this fucking rad new band mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. heard. And then she'll post videos of the band. She just fucking helps keep the scene moving. And like for, la- for lack of a better word, like a punk rock socialite, but not I don't, like socialite. Like, I don't want to, that's not, that doesn't None give her credit. No, like, exactly. Credit. And she's a great mom and she's raised an amazing, talented, fucking cool kid, you know? A great business person. Yes, yeah, she is. You know? And just a really, Cool person who was open enough to share her story with us, you know, yeah. and and uh, and make real friendships. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like um, she's another absolutely. one that we can text. You know, to, we go back and forth every now and then. Uh, not so much over the pandemic, but we've touched base yeah. again recently. And it's just yeah. uh, she's um, just it was it, the whole sublime thing. Like from our perspective, it's so far, um, you know. And there's like a lot of college bands covering sublime and things like yeah. that. And you're like. Uh, I don't want to say it ever got tropish because you never lose sight of how important they were to so many things. But when you start to get to know guys like OP and um, people like uh, Troy, and you really start to see what that movement actually was, it really um, puts things into perspective. Oh, it was amazing. You know? It was an like, incredible movement, and it was an incredible time, man. Yeah. Lucky, Cause you, cause lucky time to live in California, man, to see that band every fucking weekend. Because you were there um, really at those early shows. Oh, yeah. It was like the backyard rad. shows, right? Do you remember her from back then? No, I never knew her. But uh, I remember the band. I mean, I remember seeing them in a dive bar for literally like eight people. Wow. It's fucking awesome, dude. I think, the, I think that night the dog bit someone. And like, wasn't that an ongoing theme with them? Like, didn't they get kicked off a warp tour because Lou Dog bit somebody too, or something like that? Or I don't maybe remember that was... if that's why they got kicked off warp tour. But they definitely that dog bit fucking people. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> awesome, dude. So yeah. it's pretty cool, man. And and Bradley just inspired a lot of creativity and love, and she's just found a way to carry that on you know and yeah. really like share that love with the world it's yeah. so rad dude you know yeah. just a good person another person she's who, a great person i, I would like, almost oh, put her in you know? um i would almost put her in the same category as like uh as far as welcoming vibe almost as tommy chong like there's, there's a welcoming oh, yeah, calming vibe dude. like like you like you don't have to worry you know like you know yeah. so she must that must come from some sort of like people asking her about her life and like, like being able to yeah. diffuse that before it gets kind of Awkward or, or something like that. So I don't know. I don't know what you know. I'm totally presuming that that doesn't come from anything in the interview. But it's it's remarkable how welcome she makes everybody feel. I never uh, met her until um, Ruben, my bandmate in Manic Hispanic, who we also, also had on the show. Yeah, he uh, he introduced me, and uh, uh, I remember he took me to a party at her house once, and or one of her houses or whatever, and uh, just just cool vibes and the whole. Th- I dude. Well, just her and everyone around her still just pour love out wow. for Bradley. You know what I mean? So it's just a cool vibe always around that whole deal. And uh, it was an inspiring time to be in the local music scene when I was young, you know, and see them 
fucking a thousand times and see them just own it. See Bradley Noel just be a fucking genius, dude. A yeah. madman fucking genius on stage, dude. It was cool, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh yeah, she's somebody like that, I in my opinion, like Bradley Noel, guys like that live their life as art. Mm-hmm. You know, their person mm-hmm. is a living piece of mm-hmm. art, you know, where a lot of people might think that they don't there's something wrong with them or they don't function in society well, or mm-hmm. they have these issues or whatever. But I, I, it's, the, I think it's cause they're it's a brain that advanced just can't even be bothered with normal things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Or normal concepts of living. And a person like that is going to gravitate to someone else really special. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and she, uh, mm-hmm. there's something truly special about her for, a special kind of mind to 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 mm-hmm. bond with another mm-hmm. mind that fucking great man. Mm-hmm. There she's yeah. Wow. You, you well, know what I mean? I don't think That's we really put it any better than that. Yeah, man. Uh, that was just look, long live the queen. Fuck yeah, <laughs> Mama Troy Noel. Yeah, I hope you guys like this one. You've been doing the press junket quite a bit. You were yes. saying, yeah. Well, in New York, sorry, the first um, day we got there, <clears throat> it was back to back interviews. They had the Roxy Theater was all set up each uh, upstairs there's a hotel and each room was different magazines and or different um different actors or movie people whoever was part of whatever movie was being mm-hmm. um shown at the tribeca film festival mm-hmm. and so we stayed in one room and each person that wanted to interview us would come in so it was about four or five hours of interviews oh, straight press Jeez. wow yeah just all day so by the time i was done with like maybe the third <laughs> Gone. Yeah, and if you're not used to if you're not used to putting that kind of strength, strength mm. well, straining your voice that much, those late plates are pretty loud. Um, if you're not if you're not used to straining your voice that much, uh, it's no, it's I am. Rough. I talk a lot. Do you? <laughs> but that's not. I found out that's not what causes it. It's a cold in your throat. Oh, okay. Arthritis is a cold in your throat, and what happens is from you talking over that yep. cold, that's what. <clears throat> strains yeah. it and gets you hoarse. I've been there. Oh, yeah, All right, All right. We'll, 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 we'll hop into this because we know you're busy. Yeah. Um, and we'll get to you. <laughs> you got kids waiting in the car, everything like that, yes. trying to get their ramen and stuff like that. We're here with uh, Mama Troy, uh, wife of legendary, the legendary Bradley Knowles of Sublime. Rest in peace. Um, thank you so much for doing this. For sure, thank you, you. You have so much on your plate right now. You just came back from Tribeca Film Festival. Yes. Because you're launching a Sublime uh, documentary. documentary. Amazing. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about the documentary? Um, the documentary is all footage, uh, interviews um, with everyone who was involved or knew Bradley directly or involved in the story. <clears throat> and it was done by um, the director who filmed it or directed it. He was not really familiar, Bill Gutenberg. He was not really familiar with, not necessarily he wasn't familiar, he wasn't a big fan. Yep. He's from another generation. He's an award-winning uh, director for like um, film, war films, um, documentaries on, you know, Real things, not music. So it was a music's a real thing. Come yeah, on, God. but for him, yeah, no, you know, right. I think I'm just it joking. was really cool. No, but it's the it's the realest thing. Yeah. But for him and his skills, I think it brought another, um, a whole fresh look into our insight into the world of music and the world of Sublime because wow. he really did his research. Mm-hmm. I mean, he pulled out stuff that we didn't even see or we had never seen. He had his crew reach out to the fans. Wow. on social media and, and you know if anyone has anything they want to donate or send in so it was um i think a better way to do it because everyone keeps asking in interviews why now you know why not back mm-hmm. then and a lot of the people that wanted to work on it or you know were pitching their take on a documentary were up and coming or or bros or you know friends that wanted mm-hmm. to do it or they were fans <clears throat> and I think this is the best way we went because the outcome, the end result was amazing. I mean, it was, it was a, it's a film. Yeah. And it's not pieced together. It, it goes along the timeline. Um, it really tells our story from us mm-hmm. and not from a fan's point of view or from media's point of view. It's really raw. It's really us. And mm-hmm. they interviewed everybody. It was wow. really cool. Wow. Uh, I just want to give a sh- uh, shout out to Slide Bar. If you are hearing some noise in the background, we are at the Slide Bar Rock and Roll Kitchen in Orange County. Um, they've been nice enough to let us record here today. And so you're going to hear some plates and Cheers. things like that. There's, there's a show starting tonight. Uh, Ephraim's actually playing tonight oh, cool. in town. It's going to be great. I but uh, if, you're hearing, oh, if you're hearing some ambient time. noise, it's just a bar noise. It's, it's, uh, it's a little loud, but uh, we can hear you fine, which is important. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah you're, 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 you, sound, you sound great. Thank Raspy you. Even rasp- with my voice gone, but... It's kind of, it's working for you. Good. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how you normally sound, but it sounds awesome. 
Not this bad, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In this area, we're so close to where so many of those shows went down, right across these railroad oh, yeah. tracks. Sublime Absolutely. at the Ice House. Yes. Like oh a few God. times. I remember skating there. Yeah. You know, and, and or in La Mirada at like Chex. Yeah. Or like, you Pomona. know what I mean? Everywhere in this area, yeah. every weekend of my life, there was a Sublime show. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, and you know, know what's great about the Sublime shows at the, the smaller places, well, even at the bigger places, it was never the same. I mean, they never sing the same song twice. Right. No, it was never the same. No, that's the coolest Dude, thing. Dude, sometimes it'd be like the most trippy experimental thing I'd ever <laughs> heard. Like <laughs> playing with like the pedals for like 20 minutes before yeah. they even kicked into a song and you're just like in a trance. Yeah. It was like incredible. Or like, the song would awesome. change halfway through. He would yeah. look at the boys and, and say something and all of a sudden it would change halfway through the song, it would turn into another song. Or you'd spend an hour watching Brad restring his guitar because he'd no, no. break a guitar string. So, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. And he did not care to sit down on stage and just right in front of the audience restring his guitar. Just tuning it out yeah. loud. Yeah. It was crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. part of the beauty of it. It, 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 it was a, a crazy era because, I mean, it really was like you never knew what you were going to get, no. but it was always perfect. Yeah, like you it said was perfectly, that before. Yeah, yeah what yeah. it should have been yeah, in that yeah. situation. It was punk rock. It, yeah. They did not look punk rock or claim punk rock, but they were. The attitude. most punk rock band yeah, yeah. was punk rock. Punk rock's kind of like love. We just know it. Yeah. <laughs> when you exactly. see it, you know yeah. what I mean? I mean, you know, I always say that certain bands, like even, I always, I always refer to NWA as being punk rock, not the music. Sure. Oh, the yeah. Attitude. You know, to be saying, fuck the police. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was like, this is punk rock, you know? Mm -hmm. Punk is against. Anything that's that just your own attitude and the one percenters that don't follow the norm, then it's punk exactly. rock. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Did, and Sublime certainly didn't follow the norm. Against the grain. Yeah. They changed everything for ever, like forever. Forever. Yeah, one of those bands. Um, did you grow up in this area? I grew up in San Diego, but I was born in Orange County. Oh, wow. And then I lived in Riverside till I was about 12, but I spent every summer in San Diego. Mm -hmm. till I, and I'd go back and beg my mom, please, let's move to San Diego. So mm -hmm. I currently do live in San Diego. I've... Um, been back and forth off and on since I moved to Long That's Beach cool. in 95. Yeah. Hey, were you, uh, was, was cannabis, uh, this is a cannabis podcast, so we're going to talk about yes, that real quick, absolutely. and then we're going to talk about the movie, and then we're going to get you out of here. Okay. So, <laughs> we're, we're, we're banging it off today for you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And in a little bit, do, this room will be super sweaty, and people will be, yeah, yeah, yeah. bodies will yeah. be piled up. Yeah, it's so, I, I can't it's wait. It's surreal that we're doing it here, Yeah, yeah. So it's like so Um So, what was, was cannabis around, so you obviously sublime, I would say, is, um, as recognizable, recognizable as a music brand as it is, like it's a brand now, it's a yeah. brand full on, as it is a cannabis brand. Oh, it, yeah. Like now it's, it's like equally as embraced by both, by both cultures, which are almost one and the same to usually. To me it's like the Ramones. Yeah, sure, you but, know what I mean? But, but it's also Ramones the Ramones with cannabis. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. They didn't talk about or sing about yeah. weed. Yeah, right. They weren't like the anthem for marijuana, you know, smoke two joints. Yeah. That's not even a sublime song, but the they toys. brought it, the toys. Yeah. Yeah. They brought it back and became their anthem. That song is huge. Yeah. And, and you know the toys when when uh, Sublime signed with Universal, they, yeah. Universal had to really jump through some hoops for to publishing mm -hmm. because so many samples, ones you don't that you won't even recognize. Well, the record was so completely different when it came out. That too, because we all had the first tape. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know the and, tape and then version. there was a second tape and a third tape. I mean, it was always yeah. being changed, but there was a lot of sampling that got sampled over and over and over. But um, some people didn't want to let them use the samples, mm -hmm. but. Um, the toys, they were all about it. They, nice. they loved it. Opie was saying like how everybody was like, we're against the Beastie Boys. <laughs> oh my God. They were mad because they couldn't get a sample or something. Yeah. I remember him saying that. Like We were yep. just like, fuck them. <laughs> and I think, um, I think Schoolhouse Rocks, you know, I mean, Schoolhouse Rocks, they sample, they didn't want to let them because they're, they're a children's company. Right. Um, the uh, Gershwin Society, Summertime, mm -hmm. that was a big deal. So they had to change the original was him saying summertime, they had to change it to doing time oh, well. to get away with it. So yeah, wow. there was a lot, it was, it was a big headache for Universal. Well, was cannabis always around your family growing up? Oh yeah. My parents, yeah, they never, they didn't hide it. They were, they were always happy. The grownups were always happy, but it was the seventies. Yeah. I remember <clears throat> my mom had the sleeve from the Doobie Brothers album where it's the half smoke joint hanging on the wall. And then when I got to that age in school, when it was you know, say no to drugs and the Reagan, you know, era. Yeah. Then I got really embarrassed. It was totally normal to me until my peers and really? my friends wanted to come over. I, I remember twice running into the house and pulling certain things off the walls because my parents, that was you know, their generation. They just wow. they were always smoking weed. And um, I was the last one to ever even try weed because I didn't have really? curiosity. It was always around me. You know, I remember rolling joints for my mom in her little red rolling machine. You know, so because it was destigmatized around you, it had the exact absolutely. opposite effects that this, the squares of the world are oh, yeah. afraid of. Yeah. And you know, when we're kids, we do exactly the opposite of what our parents say don't do, and we're more fascinated by it. So I think by my parents never hiding it, and you know, they were highly functioning stoners. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it wasn't. I wasn't curious about it. I remember being like, I'm never smoking pot. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't now, <clears throat> only because it doesn't like me. 
Yeah. I wish I, it did, but I'm um, I'm really fascinated by CBD, and now that it's um, not bastardized anymore, as you know, mm. refer madness, and we're starting to learn about the medical benefits mm-hmm. of Absolutely. CBDs, which is part of yeah. the cannabinoids yeah. and yeah. you know yeah. THC taken out. That's really fascinating to me because, my goodness, it's almost maddening that we've been kept in the dark for so long about mm-hmm. the medicinal parts of marijuana. Mm-hmm. And now you go into a dispensary and the, the bigger, really nice ones, you see the medicine side line mm-hmm. and the rec line, the recreational yep. line, and you see all different kinds of people, you know, like yeah. seniors and athletes and, you know, they're in there for the medicine part. Yeah. And it's yeah. really cool and you don't see the stoners. And they're finding that there's medicinal, not medicinal, but um, harm reduction in addiction, especially oh, yeah. opiate addiction. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, yes. but before I was on this program, um, and before I was with the company that we're with now that produces this, I was in medical cannabis and uh, I ran a program called Goodbye Opioids. And, and, and there is. Oh, we need to talk. Oh, yeah, sure. Because this is something I'm pursuing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, we did a lot of events. I'm working with another company called uh, Over the Bridge now, who are fantastic. There's a place in LA, and I believe in Vegas, called High Sobriety okay. to rehab. And they said, we're not the stoner rehab, but they treat opiate specifically opiate because it requires drug replacement therapy yep, right. with CBDs. Yeah. And, you know, each person is different um, as far as the whatever uh, recipe they need or mm-hmm. formula, but it's um, it's effective in place of methadone, which methadone comes yeah, from the yeah. same. Oh, yeah, this, yeah. this was one of the, like, uh, you know, I don't want to get too off base. I want to say, excuse yeah. this on you. But uh, this is one of the things that we've, we really tried to combat in our area. In our area in Canada, it's like number two for opioid you know, wow. deaths and stuff like that. It's pretty bad next to Vancouver. And... Um, we're in Ontario, yeah. however, but um, they won't prescribe cannabis because in Canada, I'm not sure the system here, but I'm, I imagine it's the same yeah. um, because methadone clinics are for profit, oh, but they, yeah. but they, but they yeah. represent themselves. And the government the, run. Yeah, yeah. they're government run, but, the, but the pharmacists who, they, they're, make, they're making money oh, off yeah. that shit in Canada anyway. It's, it's fucked up. Yeah. It, it's terrible. It's a whole it, it, other podcast. It's a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's awful. So, yeah, but but any, any help you want with that, thank we'll you. get the move. We, we are no, happy I'm to help. I'm very fired up about that. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good for you. Yeah, thank you. So um, I'm going to ask this, and I'm probably you've been asked for a while, but you've never been on our show before. How did you meet Bradley Knowles? How did you guys get together? Um, met um, at one of his shows. Um, a friend of ours had been down in Mexico, um, San Miguel, mm-hmm. the okay. infamous San Miguel surf and then play, Sublime would play on the beach. They'd set up on the beach. And they'd be down there surfing. And a friend of ours was down there in, uh, from Ocean Beach, San Diego. And he brought back a cassette and put it on. And we were instantly like, what is this? I mean, because right away you hear the punk rock and the hip hop yeah. and the ska and the reggae all mixed in. Mm-hmm. And that's what we were all listening to at the time. I think right. it was maybe 92. Well. Yeah. And so that one cassette, and it's my, you know, I've told this story so many times, but we all copied it. Yeah. And so that whole summer, that was the soundtrack to that summer. And, you know, after a while, we kind of learned that they're from Long Beach. We didn't know what they look like, what they're about. But the readers are a magazine in San Diego, which is like the OC Weekly or, you know, it's the entertainment. You get out weekly and you check it out to see what bands are coming up. And I was looking at it and I saw at Winters, which was a heavy metal, like full on heavy, like head banging venue in San Diego, um, that Sublime was playing there. I'm like, why are they playing there? Their first time in San Diego. So it was bad booking. They didn't know. Yeah. So a bunch of us left Ocean Beach, drove all the way out to State College and showed up with maybe 10 other people. The place was deserted and we felt really bad, but they played such a good show and we felt like, oh my God, they're never going to come back to San Diego because nobody showed up. So it was really easy to go up and approach the guys when they were breaking down and loading out and Lou Dog's running around the stage. Oh, and wow. We just said, if you guys don't want to drive back to Long Beach, come down to Ocean Beach. And they did. They didn't, you know, it was, all they cared about was as long as their band equipment was okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so they came back to the beach. And we had a bonfire and talked all night. And Brad and I were friends for about two years before we even started dating. Oh, wow. So every time wow. they play in San Diego, I always was at the shows. They mm-hmm. became my favorite band mm-hmm. because the mixture. I mean, you know, I started out with, <clears throat> for my own personal favorite music as a teenager at 14, was ska, was two-ton ska. Like, and my first concert was Madness. Nice. And it was 91 cents because it was at 91X show. Oh. When 91X first started, yeah. 1984. And then um, the selector and the specials, all that. And when that when they all broke up in the late 80s, then it became California ska. I couldn't really get into it as much, and I always loved punk rock. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started going to hip-hop clubs to dance. And... Um, just loved dancing to hip hop, so it was like all of that at once. Then, then bad brains. I discovered bad brains. That was punk rock and bad reggae. Everything. Uh, and they the cla- everything. You know, before that was the Clash, but everything mm-hmm. bad brains. Come on, yeah. And I got to see them 
in 1989 at Iguanas. Iguanas. In TJ? Yes. Iguanas was an infamous, Woo! huge venue that we could all go to and see punk rock bands in their truest form because there was no laws there. I don't think I've seen anything as crazy as I've seen in that venue. Oh, yeah. Every band that would like, play there. Gnarly. Like, mm-hmm. I've never seen huge anything like that. Like, you've seen a lot of wild shit and a lot of wild oh, venues. Oh, yeah. You imagine but a balcony, the... and then they had that little balcony with the spotlights. And they right. had scaffolding. Yeah, and dudes... Climbing the scaffolding, like I guess yeah. you'd say almost three flights up, right? Yeah. Was, and, and they, I seen a dude fall, and like his oh, leg yeah. just went, womp, womp, and like, went, oh, whack, whack. Yeah. And yeah, I just but, remember them picking him up yeah. and just dragging him out. And, and I was, the floor like, was like, oh my god, the floor like, was <laughs> massive. In my memories, the floor was massive, and it was one huge remember mosh that? pit. Yeah. And you know, it, Bad Brains I, was amazing there. I they saw the PA fall over on that stage once. Oh my Holy god, I'm Rage Against the Machine. Well, wow. When, yeah. when uh, Chili Peppers played there, Anthony Kiedis. He did the whole on the scaffolding, Ooh. but he didn't fall. But he, we saw him scale that whole entire thing. And what? I was like, oh my God. You know, so many great punk rock bands. And we were young and we would, you know, power over the border and get yep. there, get as wasted as we could, see the most <laughs> epic show and not remember how we got back. But that's times. Yeah. Do you remember the, the times. there was the wall around it so you couldn't jump over? They had broken bottles and stuck them oh, in yeah. the cement instead of barbed wire. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just broken bottles. But it was built very so Mexican where they had like staircases that led to nothing. Oh, yeah. yeah and balconies yeah, yeah. that were in bizarre <laughs> so places. A bar inside, a bar outside. And you you didn't know how to get from one floor to another. You see your friends up there. It was so trippy. Classic era. You had to get really wasted to really figure it out. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But it worked. And Bad Rains, I saw there in 89, and that was just became my, my band. Wow. Um, and when I met when I met Bradley, just all the different musics that they were influenced by and and listened to was great. Oh, sorry. All the yeah. different music that um, Sublime was playing or sampling or sounded like was a mixture of all of that. All that the we things were you all loved. listening to. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> so now you're um, you, you got the documentary coming out and you've been at Tribe back out. So what are you doing there? Are you trying to are you trying to find distribution? What's going on? What's happening with trying the movie? Trying to find uh, distribution or if somebody will pick it up if they want to put it in a theater or if it'll go straight to digital Netflix. Um, so I keep getting asked, <clears throat> excuse me, I keep getting asked, when is it going to come out? When can we see it? I don't know. It'll be soon. But we got to, you know, I think we have one more festival um, that we might do. Uh, we might do, um, what's the one in the mountains, in the snow? Oh, uh, Sundance? Sundance. Sundance, we might. Yeah. And then um, we're going to do a premiere in Long Beach, of course. Mm-hmm. I'm trying nice. to get them to do a premiere in Hawaii. Wow. Because there's a beautiful theater in Chinatown and Bradley spent every summer there when he's growing up because part of the Noel family is based in Hawaii. That's cool. And mm. there's a lot of, you know, just like sublime family there. Um, Sancho, the real Sancho, his yeah. best friend, lives on the Big Island. Um, House of Flies used to be there, so those guys are all part of the family. Mm. It'd be a perfect place to, to have another premiere and a reason to go to Hawaii. But after that, it will, everybody will have access to it. That and sounds it's, awesome. That's awesome. I can't wait. So can't did everybody wait participate in the film? Like the whole, all the old band members, everything like that? Everybody. Amazing. Wow. And then some. We had An- uh, Angelo and Norwood from Fishbone. Yes. Uh, they interviewed, unfortunately it didn't make the movie, but they interviewed um, Barrington Levy. But what? it didn't make it. I don't know why. You know, they had so much to go through. Right. They explained that they had something like 6,000 pieces of media alone Jeez. to piece together and to make it flow in a timeline. And they really did a good job. Yeah. How long is it? It's um, about an hour and a half. It's not too long. Yeah. It's really visual, um, which is perfect for the Sublime fan. Right. Um, and then the interviews, they um, they interviewed, oh, Half Pint, and he made oh, it nice. in. No way. He was so great. He's so, he's just golden. Um, just talking about how special it was to him to hear these young California boys doing his music, you know, and. I get goosebumps, yeah. <laughs> but, wow. you know, it's just really cool. It's too bad they couldn't have interviewed HR because that was one of their favorites, you know. Oh, absolutely. But, yeah, but, yeah so... This episode won't be out in time, but HR is doing an art show coming up, or yes. him and his wife are. Yes. You're telling me about um, paintings. Paintings. And um, he's he's performing here and there, but he suffers from cluster headaches, and he has a GoFundMe. Yeah. But I think you know that's kind of done, and now um, his wife and he, I think through her influence, have moved on to um, painting. And I think it started out maybe as a therapy for him. But um, the flyer I got a couple days ago, and it's going to be in Los Angeles, downtown L.A., at a place called Lethal Amounts. Lethal Amounts is the art guy's bitchin'. Yeah. Really it's cool. very punk rock. And yeah. um, June 1st, and the flyer, I think it might be her painting, but she it's amazing. I'm going to put it on my Instagram, That's Mama cool. Troy PMA is my Instagram. I'll post it up there, but I'm thrilled. I cannot That's wait. Awesome. Really I cool. mean, to be somewhere where he's not performing and to not be let down because he is suffering yeah. and he's not really hundred percent. The last time I saw him perform, it's just kind of sad because you yeah. know, it's not that fierce HR, 
but to see him with art and to maybe mm-hmm. own a yeah. piece. So incredible. You're so excited. Yeah, and beyond. <laughs> yeah, yeah, beyond. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel yeah. like yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, um, that's great. And, yeah, just to be able to, something tangible, you know. So, yeah. so do you, it's, is your day-to-day, like, do you run the business of Sublime? Like, like it's, it's a huge... Yeah, um, I have... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Get my more hot toddy. Yeah, I'll help, you, I'll help you. Get that hot toddy in you. Oh, my God. That's okay. Huh? Anyways, um, we have um, great management. Mm-hmm. Surf Dog Records, which is based in yeah. Encinitas, California. And they were suggested by old management. Because old management, it, which is... Um, oh, my God. I can't think of the name right now. Old management is... <laughs> John Phillips and um, Blaine Kaplan, right. they manage live bands. Mm-hmm. And so after so many years, you know, Sublime's become a catalog band, yeah. which we're lucky, which is considered, you know, bands that get new fans every generation yeah. still are um, important and mm-hmm. still are being listened to and collected. So we needed somebody special to manage that, you know, a legacy estate. Mm-hmm. And Surf Dog specializes in that. They ma- manage um, Eric Clapton's estate and, you know, wow. so on. So... I'm so happy since we've been working with them just five years, we have like checked off our whole wish list. Wow, amazing. Pretty much. So they really were a pivotal part of getting everything like honed in and focused on getting the film even started. Because at the time, everybody was off doing their own things Mm -hmm. and nobody was really communicating. They were not really communicating through old management because some people had issues. It was drama. Yeah, yeah. But Surf Talk's really professional and they really care for how we all feel and they really. Um, they're just amazing. They really mm-hmm. got it done. That's awesome. So um, from here, so they they vet everything, flows through them, and they bring it to me and Bud and Eric. But um, Bud and Eric, you know, trust me with the merch. So I really handle all the merch, and I love it. I love doing the merch. I mean, I'll hunt down. That shirt you're wearing right now is fucking you. awesome. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. yeah, and I was leaving a parking lot in downtown L.A. just now, mm. and the girl at the ticket booth said, I like your shirt, just as I was pulling away. And I'm, I didn't say, oh, I made it, but, yeah. you know, we work with Live Nation, does our all of our merch, but I help design everything with them. Sure. It's, it's fun. Cool. And I see people out wearing the shirts and I'll, if I'm close enough, I'll hunt them down. <laughs> like, yeah. Your shirt, can I take a picture? And they get scared and uh, I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. And so my other Instagram, <laughs> yeah, that's my, amazing. Other, yeah, my other Instagram. I'm just a super fan, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm a spaz, I'm a spaz. I'm like, but, yeah. but, but my other Instagram is sublime underscore selfies okay. where I repost fans wearing the t-shirts. Oh, that's awesome. Looking scared with me chasing after <laughs> them. Or fans um, that sent me their, their tattoos. I mean, there's so many fans that have amazing. the sun on their entire back wow. or even Bradley's sublime. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, yeah. the tattoos are amazing. And Opie Ortiz is the one who, you know, yeah. that's our artist. Our friend and he's Opie. Still, our friend Opie. And he still does the sun. All and the time, huh? All the time. We're like, if you ever get sick of it, he does it. Now it's like amazing how many people have it on them or have it by Opie. It's so iconic. Yeah. It's, Absolutely it's like the, the Rolling iconic. Stones. Uh, yeah. The tongue, yeah. 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 Or, or Except for you're wears. cooler because you, I know you got Opie are still tight and the Rolling Stones actually paid, I think, $75 for that mouth thing. <laughs> oh, and, and the wow. artist never got a royalty. Well, no, and that's how it is with all record art. Yeah. yeah. Um, all record art, flat they rate. get a flat rate, and that's they're done. Yep. And Opie's part of the family, and I really fought for him to still get a royalty because oh, without yeah. that, we would not have anything. Especially right. when there was a, that period when it was the Long Beach of All Stars, but they, they weren't, they didn't belong to Sublime, they didn't belong to Universal, um, and then it was just merch because you know it was the time when everything started downloading, mm-hmm. and albums weren't selling, and so merch really kept us afloat. Um, so I just felt really bad, like, how could we be collecting these checks and royalties when it's the sun that's getting us through? Right. So I made sure, really fought for that. That's fucking awesome, wow. dude. That, thank that's you. That's awesome. a good person. Thank you. Yeah. You never, well, hear, they're you my never family. hear that ever. They're my bros, and I don't feel like I deserve to have, I wasn't in the band. Why am I mm-hmm. reaping these benefits when they're struggling? And he drew that. So, yeah. And they're still my bros. I just had lunch with Opie and his family yesterday. I mean, they're family. That's awesome. We all yeah. went through it together, and yeah. I appreciate them so much. I mean, it must be so heartwarming, and, and it must be so cool for. Um, are both your kids from Bradley, or the one, one Jake, 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 yeah. Um, it must be so cool that he can go to like essentially any mall and see something that his his father or yeah. something that you guys loved has inspired. I don't know how he how he processes it. I mean, with you know, he, he's got three other siblings. Sure. And they all don't really care, really. Right. It's because I'm mom. They don't associate me with Sublime. They're just sure. like roll their eyes. And yeah. if I have to do uh, an appearance or be so, if I have to do an appearance or be somewhere, yeah. they're like, oh god, we'll wait in the car. Oh shoot. But Jacob, growing up, um, I really protected him from right. the the 
the attention and the fame mm -hmm. of what his dad's legacy is because Jacob was really sensitive. He was really an um, intense kid, and he was a baby when Brad passed away. He doesn't yeah. remember him. And so I never put a guitar in his hand. I never let him be in interviews. And he found it, though. He found it. Oh it's my good. God! You know, he's, that's that. It happened organically. One day, around 15, I heard him playing his dad's guitar in his room because it had always been in his room, just as a you know a on a stand, yeah, one of his sure. acoustics. And I was like, "It's done. It's done." And he already had the ability to write. He was really good at reading and writing. Loved reading books, and he'd write stories. And um, it brought him out of his shell because you know when he's growing up, it was like he he had one best friend, and he didn't have a social life in school. He hated school, and now he's graduated college. He's back in college at um, Cal State Long Beach, and he's so intelligent and smart. It blows my mind. So cool. So yeah. cool. His band's called Law. Law. They're Just amazing. They're, and they're yeah. rock. They're not yeah. at all like Sublime. He doesn't have the same influences, but a lot of the fans compare him to Bradley voice-wise. Mm -hmm. right. um, he doesn't mind, but um, he'll do some of his dad's songs, but he's not trying to ride the coattails, and he's not trying to sound like his dad. And his influence Which is, is pretty cool. Different. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But the fans keep saying, we want him to sing, or we want him to replace Rome and Sublime with Rome, mm. which is the band that Eric is yeah. in, Bud used to be in. And Jake's got his own path to go on. Yeah. And I mean, that'd be really weird. But <laughs> so yeah, um, he jokes around about it, but he's never going to do that. You know, it's right. his, his music is incredible. Well, his father blazed his own trail, so I wouldn't. There you he? go. There you yeah. go. You know? And I instilled that in him is, you know, this is your life, you know, and, and to avoid that. Mm -hmm. So he is really polite to the fans and he really appreciates them. But for a while there, he was like, Mom, what do I do when they come up and they want to tell me everything about my dad, but I don't remember and I don't want to be rude. I never thought about it, you know, and I said, wow, son, that's, that's heavy. You know, just, just got to remember they don't know that either and just thank them for sharing and move on. Mm -hmm. So he kind of does a spiel because otherwise he'll get, he, I've seen him get cornered for like an hour by fans, Fuck. his dad's fans. And wow. right now the thing is, they're really pushing for is to not be playing reggae festivals anymore because they're yeah, not reggae. They're not a reggae band. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, they, you said they're almost more like a psychedelic rock. It feels like psych rock yeah. at some points. Yeah, and he's real. He almost hits Rush notes. You know, the singer Rush. Yeah, and we've and. Some of the bros have said yeah. that. I'm Canadian. I know fucking Rush. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll tell you a couple of songs to listen to where he gets that okay. note and it's, oh, my God. And can you give us his handle like so people can find him? And it's find just, it's a law, on, on Instagram, it's just law. He's just law. Just law or law LBC. Okay. And then his is Jake, Jacob Noel. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, he hardly ever posts on it. Yeah. <laughs> or he'll yeah. post himself. You know, talking and he'll let he'll let her run out all the way through him talking on purpose. But That's you know, great. he doesn't take it seriously. But um, the, the whole band's jokesters, but he's got a really great band. They're they're more like brothers. <clears throat> They've been together since they were 18, 19. Were they, were they jamming in? Oh, you guys don't have basements, but jamming in your garage at one point. They were jamming in Jake's bedroom. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, uh, you know? that, I, 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 I say the basement joke whenever yeah. because we all jammed like, in you, basements, you right? Don't have basements, we have bro. garages. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, bro, but no, we had a big backyard, and we would always get Jake to get come out. When we were barbecuing or watching um, the fireworks because we lived with a view of SeaWorld. So all sure. summer we got free fireworks every night. Sure. And he loved it. He'd come out and jam in the backyard and do all kinds of songs. And um, he's been living in Long Beach. He moved out of, of San Diego when he was 18 okay. to start his band. And now he's 24. He'll be 24 June 25th. And so I was at his house a few months ago and I brought up Ween. And I didn't know my son even knew about Ween. And his younger sister, Mary Jane, has a good taste in music. She yeah. just learned about Ween. Great. And she's been playing it. And he goes, you mean Mut Mutilate Lips, Mom? And I go, you know about Mutilate Lips? He goes, Get he got, he's got his acoustic in his living room. And he was trying to remember it. And I go, do you want me to play it for you? And he goes, no. And he was remembering it from his Whoa. head. Third time, he just busted it out. And then Baby Bitch. Oh, my God. I'm like, the, my, look at my son. Oh, he's Baby, just, baby, 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 baby. Oh my yeah, God, yeah. it's so good. And I recorded it. And then you hear his girlfriend and his older, or his sister, my, my oldest daughter, in the background of Bean Girls. And he like, looks back and he's like, he's over it. Because they're <laughs> interrupted. And I go, you buzz killers. You know, and they didn't even care how loud they were being. But he looked at me and he goes, thanks, mom. And I go, for what? And he goes, I never get to do that anymore. Like just sit and play his guitar, other people's music for fun, like wow. by the bonfire. Oh, nice. And I go, then you need to do that. Yeah. Go yeah, camping. Nice. <laughs> That's yeah, always, yeah, like, yeah. It's like, it doesn't matter what genre you're in, sitting around the campfire with a fucking guitar and exactly. having a time with your homies is the best. And it's just flowing, you know, because he goes, I'm always either on, you know, in the studio or on the stage and it's work. Mm -hmm. But I go, well, you know, it's, you're taking your lickings right now. You're, you're paving your way. But they need to play more rock venues yeah. and rock shows and, and other rock bands. 
So right. put That's the word awesome. out there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Jacob, if you're listening, if you want to come to Canada, hit us up. We'll, we'll help go, you out. He, he totally would. Oh, we'll help out for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I booked shows up there forever. That's how me and Ephraim okay, are friends see? pretty much. That's how you do it. You put it out in the universe. And it, yeah, come and on up to Canada. Have a couple and you got to come to Canada too. too. Cool. Yeah. Right on. A couple festivals. I yeah. got to come to Canada too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> come hang out. Yeah, yeah, I've been traveling a lot lately. We shoot so. in Canada all the time. Yeah. I've never been. You've never been to what? Canada? No. You got to get that fucking really? movie of yours in the Toronto Film Fest. I know, Are you huh? kidding me? I know. What an excuse, huh? Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, Dude, we're your go gateway to Canada. To Canada. Yeah, we, and, and we got to talk. We got to talk. We will. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I got some ideas. I don't want to spout them out here so nobody no, fucking but if, steals no, them. No, we've already, I've already been asked, hit up on social media if it's going to be in Australia, if it's going to be in England. Mm-hmm. And, and we only got picked up, we didn't even get picked up by South by Southwest, which mm-hmm. was interesting because they recorded the last album in Austin. Mm-hmm. I'm really glad we got picked up by Tribeca. For, for the, to me, that's like the be all end all, the top. And mm-hmm. we got picked up by them first. And mm-hmm. so we'll just see how much momentum it gains. But hell yeah, I'll, I'll go to yeah. Canada. I'll go to. Let's anywhere. do a Toronto premiere. Fly off up. Fucking right. We'll do it yeah. for sure. Let's do it. Yeah, well, I'll well, fly let's out. Do it. We'll hang. Yeah. It's we'll, done. It's done. <laughs> all right. No, and I'll, I'll, I'll set you up with our management. And yeah. No, we, we, we would be Perfect. happy to. I, no, and, and I'm, I, I mean it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, so do I. So do I. Puff we Digital, our company, will be all so over funny it. Yeah, we'll Brad wanted to go to Canada so bad. And the boys made it all the way up to Seattle. All the way up there, and yeah. because the border, yeah. and they couldn't get across the border, and he was so mad at Bud, or I think it was Bud, or maybe Eric. Somebody had like a, um, like a not a warrant, but like some you know, sort of charge, some kind of charge, yeah, yeah. and he was just so disappointed, um, and he never made it to Europe either. There was um, there's a fabled, um, it's kind of like there's, there's a couple shows at at Toronto. Um, that, like, there's one that was like, a, like a, you know, the Horseshoe Tavern. Horseshoe Tavern's oh, Horseshoe on, on Tavern, legendary. A, a legendary spot. Like the Stones used to play there. Yeah. Like it's, it's a really legendary spot. But the police played there once and oh. there was like six people. And so it's one of those things. It's one of those yeah. things that um, Fable. Uh, um, yeah. people are always like, oh, I was there. And, you know, if everybody yeah. said they were there, fucking the, the room would have been Nobody packed. Nobody was there, deal. yeah. And so, uh, but, but, but the same, Sublime has the same thing with the first Warp Tour before it was Vans Warp Tour. And I guess they got maybe kicked off or something like that because Ludog bit um, somebody or they something. They got kicked off back east. Right, but so there's all this uh-huh. thing where people, because it, it was still on the poster. Yeah. So there's all sorts of people who are like, yeah, I saw Sublime. Yeah, I like, saw no, Sublime. No, they, no, they did. did. No, they did, just saw it on the poster. Yeah. And they think they did. They're like, yeah, we still remember hilarious. that part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's, uh, that, that's a real so, thing. So you know it'd be kind of like... Um, there's a lot of Sublime fans. Be a, it'd probably be a, like a, in a way... Um, a tribute to Brad because he wanted to go so bad to have the film. Ooh, that's a, yeah, that just tripped me then it's out. It's gotta happen. Just, that just tripped me yeah, out it's right gotta now. happen. I'm tripping right <laughs> now. Yeah, I would See? love. We would be honored. Okay, too. it's done. Absolutely. <laughs> so we're at, we're at 31 minutes, and I know you got to get going. Yep, so I don't want to take long, you much longer. But I'm just holy uh, smokes. <laughs> thank you for doing. We're gonna this. hang again. Yes, absolutely. Can we be best friends? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. People always go, um, "How many best friends did you make today?" Yeah, a lot. Awesome. Because I'm rad. Mama Troy, thank you so much for telling us how you got into the weeds. Oh, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. This episode was presented by Pot Guide and WikiLeaf. Please follow ITW on Twitter and Instagram at Get Into The Weeds. You can follow Ben Rispin at Ben Rispin. You can follow Ephraim Martinez Schulz at F by Stereo. And me, Bubba Nicholson at Bubba Nicholson. ITW's theme music was written by Jacob Bergsma of My Son the Hurricane. Visit them at www.msthofficial.com. Special thanks to our friends at Puff Digital, Program Skate and Sound, and the Slide Bar in Fullerton, Orange County. Sound engineering provided by Roman Marconi at Halo Studios Hamilton. ITW was created by Ben Rispin and is produced by Master Volume. 